Salud, this is Elena from Elena the Expat and today I'm in Chisinau city center. But instead of showing you the beauties of the city, I'm actually going to do another expat interview. In this series, I'm exploring why people move to Moldova, what they enjoy about staying here and how their experience really is. In today's episode, I'm meeting Tae Hee, who is a Korean woman. She has traveled to over 70 countries and for the last three years she's living here with her family and I'm really curious about her story so let's go meet her Tehi, mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much for inviting us into your home. It's gorgeous. I know we've been planning this interview for quite a while now, mm -hmm. but for our listeners, just tell me a little bit more of how and why you came to Moldova. Okay, thank you for coming to my house. I'm here in Moldova uh, for three years already. My husband and me are actually working in the development area, so we are traveling like every three, four years to different countries. Did you have a choice between different countries or uh, it, you were just sent here? We can choose some countries, but the like, final decision is uh, like uh, from the company. I studied in Moscow, Russia, and then I did my the volunteer work in Uzbekistan as well. So this is a, yeah, as you say, it's a very familiar area for me. But the, after that, actually, I was uh, in Korea and uh, was in other countries. So this is a kind of the, like after 10 years, I coming back this my like uh, kind of the second the home culture. In what years did you visit Uzbekistan and Moscow? I was in Moscow from 1992 1994. <gasps> it was like a kind of perestroika and those kind of the very... Times. Yeah, revolutionary time. It was very interesting actually. It was not easy, but it was a very interesting time. And uh, Uzbekistan, I went to, to 1997 to 1999. So there are actually a lot of like uh, Korean, Russian, the, gen the peoples who went to, to the in the Korean, like old Korean time. So yeah, I taught their Korean language in this like uh, second and third generation of Korean. There is a lot of interest in Asia in mm -hmm. Moldova, but especially in Korea because there are so many good dramas, there are so many good bands and. The makeup is amazing. So I feel like a lot of people are kind of interested and curious about the culture. And here actually, no Asian in this culture. Like if I say from Korea and they more like, uh, they, in these days uh, they like Korean culture. So they are very like interested about uh, like uh, Korean dramas and uh, Korean, Korean song and those things. But if you go back in time to when you just arrived, how did you make sure that you had a community around you, a circle of friends with whom you can communicate? It was just you and basically your family. How can one go about extending and sort of meeting new people as a foreigner mm -hmm. in Moldova? I actually the joined at the beginning the International Women's the like uh, club. So there was a lot of like uh, expats uh, uh, who came from all the different countries. So that was a very nice for me as an expat. And uh, also a lot of like uh, Moldovan people, the, I mean, married to like uh, a lot of different like uh, countries. Mm -hmm. As far as I understand, like for the foreigners who are women and come into Moldova, they can join the society. We will leave the link to the group um, uh, in the comments so you can explore it. Um, any other way how you made friends, maybe through your activities or your husband's job or anything like that? I have like a nine-year daughter and she is in international school and uh, there are the like parents all from the, I mean, the foreign countries and there are some Moldovan the parents as well. So in the school there are a lot of like activity and meeting if you want to join more like uh, activity, participate, there are a lot of like, uh, yeah, meeting 
Uh, certainly, you have traveled in so many countries, each one with their different culture. So I'm curious to hear your take on the Moldovan culture. How do you find the culture overall? How do you find the people? How would you explain Moldova to a person who has never been here? I lived here like three years already. And uh, what I really like here, the first one, as I said, like, uh, park here green park is everywhere in the city so you can uh, walk everywhere like uh, and you can meet uh, any park in five minutes and so that that would be nice to be have like uh, a lot of park in the city so that's like a natural things is uh, good and then the second actually as a culturally we we surprised actually how much like a winery here in Moldova so actually we, we love the wine so uh, if you are the wine lover this is a great country to come <laughs> and uh, yeah and very reasonable and very high quality so we traveled a lot of winery and third one is uh, as i said there is uh, a lot of like a theater mm -hmm. this is a kind of the come from soviet time as well i think a lot of like uh, the ballet and opera and uh, this a uh, musical and yeah those things and very reasonable again so and then you can if you want to go every weekend you can go to yes. enjoy this like uh, cultural things it's very accessible um very if you accessible. think about opera or ballet or just a musical concert mm -hmm. the tickets start from three to five dollars and if you want to get really good seats it mm -hmm. can go up to let's say 15 yeah. maybe 20 dollars per like a three hour concert so mm -hmm. it's very very affordable and i hear a lot of foreigners saying like hey i could not afford this lifestyle in my home country mm -hmm. but here i can go every week like yeah. to any concert yeah so me and the, my uh, like uh, with my daughter and my husband we went to, to like uh, every opera here and the old ballets the beginning i feel like uh, a little bit the uh, oh so people not really the smiling yeah people <laughs> Because I kind of the, like uh, used to like a very quick service and in Korea yes. especially, so I feel like uh, oh, I I like to see more like a uh, kind of past service. But uh, now I feel uh, it's uh, yeah people are very like uh, polite and uh, nice. I think that's something that Moldovans really should work on. Mm. You know, not talking about just random people on the street who don't mm -hmm. know you, but people who do their job mm -hmm. and they should properly greet the customers, mm -hmm. say mm -hmm. thank you, you know, you're welcome, come next time. Um, yeah, Asia does really have like a very high standard e of service. Yeah, yeah, Asia is, uh, has a little different uh, level of service. I don't know if it's a good thing or bad because uh, those people maybe there's a lot of emotional yeah. kind of service as well. Compared to like other big like a capital city, there here is a, like a less foreigners I think so that's why there is not relation like a culture here. And yeah, uh, from what I know, we have like one Chinese restaurant. We have maybe three Japanese restaurants. We have a lot of sushi restaurants, but those are not, I guess, the sushi that Asian oh, people yeah. are accustomed to. <laughs> <laughs> too much, it's too a different much cream stuff. cheese. <laughs> too much cream cheese in the sushi. That's a kind yeah, of we really like, like the Asian Philadelphia. Like, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one big thing, the lack of uh, yeah, Asian yeah, cuisine, or yeah, I would Asian say like cuisine, cuisine diversity yeah, here in Moldova. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Do you have any recommendation for restaurants that you personally like or cafes or anything? That oh, you yeah, recommend? I have a lot. My husband actually has a list of <laughs> So give me like top three and we'll leave the, uh, the um, directions in the comments for our viewers. Moldova food is nice and also like uh, this restaurant we found actually, yeah, has a very high quality of the food and they, I mean, the, I think a lot of like a young chef, they trained in other countries yes. and they come back here and then they open a lot of like a nice uh, like a restaurant. There's Asian street I like mm -hmm. and the Osho restaurant, you uh, um, know the in, Osho yeah, restaurant? In Botanica? 
Yeah, it's around that area. Yeah, that yeah. area. So I, I heard part. very good things about yeah. it, and I read the reviews, but I've never had the opportunity to go there, so mm -hmm. I, I should. <laughs> you have one more <laughs> room for I one more. I have one more. So I want to give yeah. one like a pub because yes. I mean there are a lot of like different restaurants I like, but uh, Holes Gastro Pub. Yeah, Holes. Yes, Hose that's Gastropub. also a very yeah. nice place. Yeah, very, yeah. especially Hose. if you like beer, beer or mm -hmm. yeah. So if you like. Uh, beer and those kind of the things that's so nice we are moving more to the family part of uh, this uh, episode um, you moved here with the family and obviously one of the big questions is sending your kids to school mm -hmm. so how does that work when your kids are english speakers there is like a qsi and uh, there are habit heritage those two actually here are big so we are traveling the different countries, so she needs to be educated uh, more in English continuously. So yeah, she goes like a QSI here. What are the conditions of the school like? Do you have an yearly tuition? And if so, how big is it? Or is it something that you have to pay every month? I think it's a yearly tuition, but uh, I and the, I mean the exact like tuition you can go to see in the like their web page. Mm -hmm. And uh, I heard this like heritage is cheaper than the QSI. Tuition is uh, not cheap, but like around like ten thousand to like thirty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So there are different fees for people who are Moldovan citizens they, and I think want they, to send they do the some kids, like, uh, yeah, they as do opposed some to like, internationals. Uh -huh. So that's a pretty big amount when you uh, compare it to the, you know, uh, the salaries that people have in Moldova. That's actually pretty course, expensive yeah. even compared to universities. So I'm curious to know. Also, so expensive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm curious to know what the child uh, gets in terms of education and facilities for that amount. The, there are a lot of like uh, English, like uh, speaking, like uh, native the uh -huh. teachers there. They following like uh, all British or American kind of the curriculum. curriculum. Mm. She is like uh, Korean and she is American as well. So I think she need to get the education later in maybe English speaking. And then you can go to the university or in Europe or in US and yeah, or in Asia everywhere. So basically, if English you, for speaking. example, study in the U.S. and then you need to come to Moldova for a couple of years, you can get educated in the schools and you basically would have the same curriculum and learn the same things as if you were in the U.S. So when you come back, you can actually continue your, your mm -hmm. education and don't skip this two years. How do you like your classes? What sort of classes do you have? Well, let's start from the beginning, actually. What grade are you in? I'm in third grade. And uh, wh what do you learn right now? We learn science, we learn math, we learn languages. My favorite is music. Mm -hmm. In terms of facilities, do you also eat at school? Are you bringing lunches from home? You can either bring your lunch to school or eat at the school. We have like some Moldovan foods oh. there, but and some of non-Moldovan. Well, we have spaghetti, there's couscous, mm -hmm. there's lasagna, there's meat. Mm -hmm. There's basically just like simple stuff there. Do you like eating at the school or do you like more what your mom is cooking? I like what she cooks better, but <laughs> I'm eating at school. Do you have any other facilities, you know, besides the classrooms, for example, for sports or for music? Yes, we have a gym for... Oh. PE, but if it's cold, then we do it in the gym, but if it's warm, then we go to the field. Uh, do you have a swimming pool? No, we do not. Uh, do you want, want to have a swimming pool? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Heritage has a swimming pool. Yeah, oh, yeah. okay. So overall, how many kids do you have in the same class? I think about 15. We have two Moldovans in our class, we have Americans and we have different countries. So that's, I think, a quite small uh, class size according mm -hmm. to Moldovan standards. When I was learning in public school, we have, you know, 25 to 30. And obviously mm -hmm. when you have 15 kids, you, you can be mm -hmm. more attentive to each kid mm -hmm. individually. 
Korea uh, is renowned for having such a competitive education system, like it's very tough. US is a little bit more relaxed and I feel like Moldova, <laughs> we are even more relaxed. Not to say that education is not important for Moldovans, but um, I feel like for Moldovan parents it's more important to have um, happy kids and for kids to enjoy and sort of use this time to, to mature. Uh, what is your take on education in Moldova, having been exposed to education in Korea? I mean, the, this international school is a little different, so I couldn't compare to actually Moldovan education to Korean education. For me, individually, I try to be more relaxed, <laughs> <laughs> like a lot of people. So sometimes I feel like, oh yeah, you need to do this one, this one, this one. You need to, you know, you are so, so, so like, so like a happy or in Korean, the student today goes like after school, you need to go to some different kind of the, like a class. I'm not really feel like uh, pushy her to like a Korean style. She happy. Right, and uh, enjoying their like uh, school time. Your family travels quite a lot and I'm sure you have memories of being in other places too. How do you find Moldova compared to other countries? It's a peaceful place. Huh. Not too many people, not too loud. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely. This is a very like a uh, peaceful and calm, right? The I like this also like a very safe country. You can go out like at the evening or night. You walk around mm -hmm. by yourself and has no problem. Even though the war is next door, here it's peaceful. One of my friends actually visited here, and then when she come here, is there okay? Like uh, there's a war. Everybody talking about the war, so. Don't worry about it. here is fine. So I think people are like uh, worry about a lot uh, like uh, safety here. How it's uh, like uh, okay to be there, very very safe country and uh, yeah, I, compared to like uh, many other countries. Yeah. Uh, what do you like to do after school and how do you have fun with your friends? Well, I like to ride my bike around at the park. Well, with my friends, I do play dates sometimes at their place or here. I also like going on walks with my mm. family. Yeah, in her age, we we more like uh, doing the play date. There is uh, like uh, several kids play place and a nice uh, uh, water park for kids. And in the center, there is some like a uh, small amusement uh, like mm -hmm. uh, play things. If you have like a small kids, so uh, this is very like a uh, kids friendly place. In restaurant, there are some like a uh, uh, play area as well. Yeah. Yeah. You can walk to many places. It's safe to walk. The distances are not as big as opposed to the U.S. You would have to ask your parents. They would have to put you in the car and then you like drive miles, miles, and miles until you go to the said playground. So the walking culture in Moldova, you walking with the kids or you know mm. without the kids, is very, very strong. Moldovans are very fond of walking through mm. parks, to parks yeah. around the city. So, thank you so yeah. much for the interview and thank you so much for welcoming us in our home. As I mentioned before all the places that we have referenced throughout the video will be in the comments below so you can find them do your own research and uh, any comments are welcome uh, see you in the next one bye 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 bye